Okay, now I go to how to build up marriage, how to build up a better relationship. First, it's very important, always think of how to satisfy the other person, makes the other person happy. But most people getting into marriage, they don't think of that. Most people. Like for instance, if a few men talk together, what do, we, do they talk about the marriage? If they, you know, uh, the one guy is going to get married or has got, got married, what do they talk about? Oh, my wife doesn't do this, my wife didn't do that. It's always this, my wife is nagging. Always saying she didn't do it. Seldom do, do a man will say, I should have loved her more. Uh, or before marriage, they won't say, oh, I want to love this woman. I want to care about her. People just don't think like that. Or when women talk together, one of the women is about to get married. What would they talk about? Oh, he's handsome. He's good looking. He has a lot of money. <laughs> they will look at the other person. They won't say, oh, I want to care about him. I want to make him feel happy. I want to make him feel loved. That's what is not in the mind of most people when they get married. Because people are basically selfish. People basically want to get something. Now, before I marry my wife, I told her, when I marry you, I'll smile at you every day. I'll hug you, kiss you, I'll make you happy, I'll do things to please you. I told her that before I get married. I really want to work on it so that I have a good marriage. Okay, and then, that's the first point, to make you know, to make the spouse happy and satisfy her needs. And the second is, always prepare ourselves to be a good marriage partner, to be a good spouse. The first is to have good EQ. Many men and women get emotional and happy. Now, women and men are unhappy in different ways. For women, they might talk too much and get emotional. For the men, they might walk away, don't talk, you know, that's emotional expression. Or sometimes for men, big anger, strong anger. So if we can manage our emotions, prepare ourselves to be someone who can listen, who can respond to people, who care about people, that's very important. So if people get married, about to get married, they should, the most important thing is not how attractive does the the girlfriend or the boyfriend is, is how much they prepare themselves <coughs> to be good spouse. If they're not prepared, they will not have a good marriage. And a, and a second is to put down ourselves. Now for many men, when they think of marriage, they just think of, I get married and then I have a woman to take care of me. And I still go on my own life. But we have to be prepare for this. When we get married, we have to put down our own single life. Now I'm getting into a married life. I want to care about her, spend time with her. Because for many men, they think of, I want to spend time watching TV, watching, doing this, having fun. They don't think of having time for the family. And then, the man should know this. In order to build a good marriage, to give time to the wife. So, be prepared to give time and then to really respect the relationship put her in a number one place of course other than God put her in a very high place and share the feeling and don't repeat the same faults now that's what happened to most men that men make the same mistake over and over again because they don't pay attention they don't are not serious so that's why they repeat the same fault again and then do not be a chauvinist male chauvinist that they want the man, woman just to listen and obey, and, uh, but to really respect the woman. And then the woman should know, give the man space, give him time. Don't force him to give up what he likes. When he likes to do something, don't force him to give up. Don't try to change him. Now it happens a lot, you know, like Christian women, they want to change the husband to love God more. We all want that to happen. But sometimes the more the wife pushes him, the more he doesn't want to come to church. He doesn't want to listen to you. So the best way to change him is not by trying to change him. It's by loving him and showing how much the wife cares about the husband. And then the husband sees that the wife is so nice 
and then he would be interested in what she is doing. That she sees Jesus is very good. But if the wife keeps telling you, you have to go to church, you have to pray, you have to do this, it just gives pressure. And in my teaching these last two days, I've talked about it's very important to use love as a motivation. When you love him, then he'll change. But if we tell him what to do, then it's, it's not going to change him. And then number four for women to know is to don't make him lower than you. Don't prove that he's lower than other men. Don't make him feel you can command him. And then number five, don't insist he's wrong. Don't keep telling him. You're wrong, you're wrong. Don't argue about that. And then, another point now. This is about the love bank. Now, in your bank account, you have to put money in, in order to have money out, right? In a marriage, also, there is love. You have to put in love before you can take something out. So, if both men and women don't put anything in, there's no money, no love in the bank, then the relationship will not be better, will, will not get better. But if both put time, attention, care, help to their person, then the relationship will build up. So if we want the relationship to be good, we have to put time into it, put effort into it. And then willing to forgive. For husband and wife, it is very hard because there are years of unforgiveness of all these grudges in the past. How can we forgive? The key to forgive is compassion. Think of the, the spouse has have been hurt for so many years. For many guys, they have not grown up to understand feelings. They have not grown up to share. So have, have compassion on them. And therefore, don't expect them to be so attentive to us, to care about us, but understand how he is, then we can have compassion and understand and then forgive. Now for many husband and wife, when it comes for counseling, they already have problems. You just tell them, love each other, they won't, because they have all these reasons behind. So in order to do counseling to help them, we have to, to break down all this, to let them know what's happening and the background, each person there is a background of hurt experiences, that's why you cannot care when they understand each other and accept each other and then know how to use positive language. Positive language is very important. The words of grace, remember I talked about that, and the words of the law in a gentle way. Instead of saying, go clear the garbage, please help me clear the garbage. I'm very happy you do that. So when we use gentle words, great word of grace and words of the law in a gentle way, that will then, you know, the relationship will be better and then also the past hurts will be, you know, uh, will be healed. But many people, they just remember all the faults and cannot find a uh, solution. Now for counseling, we have to listen to people and understand the dynamics of the couple. So, very important for marriage counseling is to listen to both persons before we respond. But now I'm just going into how to build up the marriage. And then to build up the marriage, they need to be willing to solve the problems. They need to be willing to solve the problems. If they're not willing to solve the problems, now first, first thing I ask a couple when they come for counseling, I will ask them, do you have hope in the marriage? Do you want to work on the marriage? Do you think your marriage will get better? So I ask them, and what do you see are the good points of your husband or wife? So I ask them the positive things. Do they have hope? Do they want to uh, resolve the problems? And then this is very important, the five languages of love. Have you heard of it? There is a book out on it. The first one is attentive time. Now the wording in the book might be different because I'm quoting from the Chinese book. <laughs> Attentive time, time to be attentive, put down the cell phone, put down the TV, <laughs> just pay attention to each other and listen. Attentive time. Second is language of love, positive words, appreciating words, words of love. Third, gifts of love. Five, 
and four, surface. And number five, body contact. Now, the, body, the five language of love, we have to do what the spouse wants, not what we want. For instance, a husband for a, birth, uh, for a birthday gift to the wife gives her an exercise machine. You need an exercise machine. When you do an exercise machine, you'll be slimmer. <laughs> but the wife received that gift. She was saying, you're telling me to do exercise. That's not something I want. <laughs> That's what the husband was. That is not a language of love. It's a language of command. <laughs> so in order to, to be, you know, the love language, now my wife did it with me. You can do it with your husband and wife. Have a sheet of paper, each one of you. Split it into two. One side, write down what is the most important one of these. Attentive time, language of love, <coughs> gifts, service, body contact. Which one is most important to you? Write down. And a second column, write down what you think your spouse sees as most important. So each one write down what they think, what they are, and then what they think the spouse is, and then look at it, compare, and then talk about it. Because we want to know what the other person needs, what they want. And also a lot of times it's like this. Even service. Some people like, uh, like their wife, might like the husband to massage her. Uh, help her do the bed, help her wash the dishes. But the, for the husband, he might like to do something else. I want to build a shelf. I want to build something in the backyard. But the wife might not be interested in it. Sometimes the wife is interested. But what, what the wife is interested, the husband should do. Not what he wants. He wants, I want to make a ping pong table in the back. The wife is not interested. <laughs> So do what the other person wants. That's the key. And most women wants what? Out of the five, you know what, what most women want? Most women want attentive time. Word, uh, and then words of love. And then for men, what do they want most? Number one could be, for many men is body contact. And um, also for many men is language of love that not nagging but caring. Okay, so this is very important that uh, the five languages of love. And the next point is the triangle of marriage love. The triangle of marriage love. There are three points in a marriage love. There is passion. There is intimacy and commitment. Compassion is when someone is falling in love. They think about each other all the time. They want to see each other. They excite about each other. When they see each other, they want to hug each other. That's passion. They're really excited. Like when I go back to Hong Kong, my wife would be waiting for me. She would drive the car to the airport, she will wait for me, and when she sees me, she will be very excited. <laughs> That's her passion. And I'll be very happy too. But I would say, her excitement is higher than mine. And I, I want to think about how good she is, and I want to be more excited. But it's natural that women are more excited for the relationship. They put in more into the relationship. And number two, intimacy. That means they can talk to each other, care for each other, <coughs> spend time together. And number three, commitment. Like the marriage, uh, the, uh, the marriage commitment that they're married to each other. Now for some relationship, there is only the commitment, they're not divorced. No more passion, no more intimacy. For some marriage, no more. But you might say, well then, what can we do? If there's no more left, just the marriage, we just stay together, eat together, but we don't talk, no relationship, what can we do? Then we first build up the intimacy. 
the communication, the care. Uh, do you want, usually I ask them, do you want to build up the marriage? Do you want the marriage to be better? Do you want the marriage to be better? Do you want to pay a price to spend time with your wife? <coughs> then the rest of your life will be happier. Then you'll be happier for the rest of your life. Like for me, I know that my life will be happy. I know that my wife will continue to love me. I want to treasure this. I don't want to ruin it. I know that she will continue to love me and I want to keep that. And I can enjoy the rest of my life. I enjoy my ministry, I enjoy my wife, I enjoy God, everything I enjoy. But if I have problem with her, I would have problem in all these areas. If I have problem with her, she'll be against me. Now when women don't find a man to be loving and kind, and then the woman will think that he's a hypocrite. He preaches the word of God, but at home he doesn't love me. Then she'll be against me. And then I won't have strength in my ministry. I won't be free. I, I cannot, hallelujah, praise the Lord, hallelujah. I can do this because I have no burden behind. I have no worry behind. I'm all free. I'm all, you know, all, I have no burdens. I have, you know, in my heart is all truthfulness. It's all freedom. It's integrity. I'm living my life according to God's word. That way, I'm all free. So I ask people, do you want a good marriage life and a good Christian life and a good <coughs> ministry life that your whole life is, it goes to the highest point? Then you want to first build on the intimacy and then as time goes on, when you spend time walking on the beach, just enjoy it. You know, some people say, I don't know what to talk with her now. I don't know what to say. Uh, just look at the flowers and look at the birds and, and then talk to each other and say, well, I'm so happy with you. I, I'm happy to spend time with you. I, I like you. I, and think back the time when they fell in love, how to build up. But it's the hardest part to build up the passion. It's the hardest part. Listening. I want to talk about listening. One key to marriage is listening. And listening is very difficult. We have exercise of listening and one person listen and then all the rest in the circle. I mean one person talk and everyone listen. And then afterwards I'll ask them, okay, what did he say? What what was his feelings? We find that some people will say, well, he should do this, he should do that. <laughs> he talked about his experience and then people say he should trust God more. Is that listening? When he says, you should do this, you should do that. He's commanding, he's teaching. Another thing is, people don't listen clearly. The content, the feelings. When your wife is unhappy, can you hear it? Do you notice it? And do you know why he, she's unhappy? Most men don't know why. Most men will say, I don't know why she's unhappy. I've done my best already. And every time she says the reason, and then the man will say, well, you know, like for instance, the, the wife says, uh, use an illustration. Uh, the, the husband is late. And then the wife is very unhappy. So the man came, he came late. And then the woman is very unhappy. You, why are you late? And then the man will tell all the reasons, you know, Someone stopped me, it's what happened. So he would talk about his reason. But he did not pay attention to the feeling of the wife. At that time, what is the feeling of the wife? The feeling of the wife is that the man doesn't pay attention to her. Because if he really treasure her, she would, he would not be late. He would try his best. If the husband is going to see the president, he would not be late. But because he's seeing the wife, therefore he can be late. So instead of giving all the excuses, the husband can say, I'm sorry I, I was late and made you feel so unhappy. I'm sorry I made a mistake again. So respond to the feelings, knowing that she's unhappy. Instead of responding by saying why he's late. What I want to say is, for most of the time, like, for instance, the wife is unhappy. 
uh, she says, uh, now I'm pretending I'm the wife, I'm saying, uh, today I went to church and I was doing some ministry, I was counting money, uh, and then someone had to use the room, and we could not, I mean, just, I'm, I'm making up the story. And we could not use the room, and we went to another room, and, and then we made some mistakes, and I was very unhappy, okay? Now, as a husband, what can you say? What do you hear? Can you, can you tell, can you say, oh, anyone, what I just said, can you say what happened? And then the feeling said, can you say it? You can basically repeat what I said. Can you say it? Just repeat what I said. Okay. Now what I want to say is, when a woman share about that, she's very unhappy. Maybe not very unhappy. She, it's just a small thing. But she was unhappy. And when the man hears that, what, what would he normally do? He would say, oh, you don't have to feel unhappy. No problem. Next week, you find a solution. You find a better room. So the husband will have a tendency to give advice. Next week, don't do this, don't do that. Because he was not listening to the wife's feeling. But if he hears that, what can the husband say to the wife? If he hears the, the wife saying that, what can he hear about the wife's feeling? He can say, I know what happened makes you feel unhappy. And all these were planned that you could use the room, but now you could not use the room. And you could not do things as planned, and it makes you feel unhappy. And it seems that things did not went right, and then you count the money, and, you, and then you found that you made a mistake, and then you recount. And so all this is very, makes make you feel unhappy. That way we are responding to the feeling. We are listening to her. But for most men, they, they could say, Oh, no problem. Uh, next week will be better. <laughs> or, uh, don't think about it. Let's watch TV. Let's eat. Let's go, go and eat. These are avoiding the issue. Has it happened to you that a husband doesn't want to talk? Avoid the issue. Let's go and eat. Let's do something else. No big problem. Or, don't worry. Next week, this is what you handle. So most people want to give advice and don't listen and don't respond to the feelings. So if we learn to do that, your wife would be much happier. And for the woman too, to listen to the man. To listen to him and say, you know, because the man might say something. Now, it could be what he is doing is something the woman doesn't like. For instance, the, the man said, today I watch football. Wow. Ah, the, the team I like, they lost. I don't think they should, you know, it, it's unfair. The, the referee is unfair. You know, and then the wife said, you watch too much football. Why do you always watch football? And why are you unhappy? Say you have no love for the Lord. You don't pray. You watch, you spend time <laughs> watching football. <laughs> now, we want the husband to change, but then that way, would the husband change? No. But you... You, how can the wife respond when your husband says that? Basically, even though you have no interest in football, you can say, well, I, I can see that, you know, what you watch today, it's something unfair happened. The referee did not do a good job, and then the team lost, and then you feel very unhappy. So we just, we can say basically what he said. To say that, yes, I understand you. I know what you mean. And we don't have to condemn. We don't have to teach. That way. And then, gradually, sometimes, you want to change a husband or wife, we can guide them. You know, and instead of telling them to pray, we can share, well, today, I pray and I experience the joy of the Lord. And you watch the husband. The husband has no interest. And... And then you know that he is not interested. But you can still, we can still share. 
I, you know, I really feel joyful today. I, it really is good feeling. And, but he doesn't respond, it's okay. So for the wife, it has to get used to the husband not responding. But then, uh, finding that sharing might not be the best way. Caring for him may be the best way. To tell him, you know, uh, for instance, the husband has some problem. Uh, the wife can say, I know you're facing a difficulty. I know you're unhappy. So that's listening and then responding to the feeling. I know it's unhappy for you. I know you find life very difficult. Uh, can I pray for you? Instead of saying, you pray. Can I pray for you? I, you know, I, I care about you. I want the best to happen to you. That way, he feels careful. Instead of saying, you pray. That's the command. We, we want to say, what can I do to help you? Or, I, I want to pray for you. So that's listening and responding to the feelings. That's something uh, we want to practice. That. For instance, your son come home and say, ah, I don't do well so, so well in school today, my result is not good, my grades are not good, and then, and then we have a tendency to say what? That's why, because you, you, you play too much, you, you play the, uh, the games too much, you spend too much time there. But we can respond by saying, oh, uh, today you're very unhappy because your grades are not good. I know that it's not easy for you. And I noticed that you did work hard. You did work. You did work on it. I mean, maybe you didn't work enough, but you did work on it. And I, I see your effort. And uh, with your effort, you can get better. So we always want to say the positive. And then, then maybe they will listen to us. But if without that, it's, we just tell them what to do. It, it's very hard to change them. Have you noticed in the family, mostly people talk, you didn't do it, and what you should do? Have you noticed the language is all, almost always like that? It's always the word of the law. Instead of, oh, I know you are unhappy. I know you're going through that. I know it's not easy for you. And then, and then uh, sometimes offer help, or sometimes uh, you will say, oh, it's okay, and I, uh, I care about you. To make people feel happy, and then we can change them. For instance, in these few days I've been teaching, but have you noticed that? I, actually, I talk a lot. I, first, I talk a lot about the love of God, His grace, His mercy, His goodness. He cares about you. You are very precious. You are very important. God can use you mightily. And then I did talk a lot about what you can do, right? But when you notice when I talk about what you can do, I do not, I did not condemn. I did not tell what you did not do well. I did not say, well, you have not been good Christians, that's why uh, you have sins. I don't say anything like that. I always say in a positive way, God cares about us. Our life can go better and we can, you know, when we come to God, we can get strength and then we can do great things for God. I always approach it from the grace of God and then I say, we can do better. Instead of saying, you have to do better. So that kind of language we have to get used to in a family. And whenever you notice the husband and wife is doing something well, then you say, well, you're doing well. You're doing great. You have, you're working on it. You're improving. That way, few people feel encouraged. Okay? So listening is very important. And um, handling conflict. I'll just finish talking about this and then we can stop. For each conflict to happen, both persons have a reason to be unhappy. Both persons see the other person being wrong most of the time. So how can you resolve it? The reason is because men look at things differently, women look at things differently, and also most things went wrong because they are responsibility of each person. But even when one person has most of the faults, he doesn't want to admit it. So that's why it's hard to resolve conflict. Because behind the conflict, the hardest thing to resolve <coughs> are the emotions. So you can write this down, it's very important. Behind the conflicts, the most difficult thing to resolve are the emotions. The negative emotions that have existed for years, it shows up in this event. That event can be a little thing, can be a very little thing. 
Maybe one person is late for five minutes, and then the other person is very angry. And all these years you have been late, and all these years don't care about me. And I don't want to be with you. I want to have a divorce. <laughs> so it it can be one small thing, but all this behind. So, but then the husband have a tendency to say, "Ah,、uh, well." And the 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 late the bus came late. Oh, the the traffic is jam. You know, traffic jam. All this problem, and that's why I'm late. And why why are you so angry? He's just giving excuses, reason why he was late, instead of responding to the feelings. So the first thing to resolve conflict is to respond to feelings and say, I'm very sorry to make you feel unhappy and and make you feel <coughs> I don't respect you, and. If the man is really respecting the woman and say, "I really want to learn to respect you more. I want to see you as very important. I'm very sorry about this that makes you feel unhappy. Please forgive me." So,、uh, to respond to the feelings. Now, for instance, it's children problem. Very often, the wife would complain, "You didn't care about the children. You didn't do your part."、Uh, the, so the the wife would say, and then the husband would say. You're not good mother. You don't know how to take care of the children. So each one is blaming the other one. So how do we resolve this conflict? So behind it, what's the biggest problem? Accusation of each other. The feelings behind. <coughs> so how can how do we solve it? First, both sides realize. So when there's counseling, we want to pay attention to the dynamics, and realize that it's because. There is guilt, there is accusation, and they lay the guilt on each other. And then I want to find out about what each person has already done. The husband, what has he done? The wife, what has he done? And what are the problems? Okay. And then I find that both persons have done something. The husband did try, but did didn't do well enough. The wife has tried and didn't do well enough. Now, for me as a counselor, I would say, I appreciate you. I say to you, you have done your part, even though it's not well enough. But you have done your part, and the wife, you have done your part, and you you tried, but it didn't work. So first, appreciate both sides. Now, if it's you in a marriage, then you say, well, you did try, and I tried, but the children still have problem. What can we do? So that's resolving the problem, not blaming, and responding to the feelings. For instance, the husband can say to the wife, "I know you have worked so hard you, to help the children, and the children don't listen, and so you feel unhappy, you feel disappointed. You you have done so much already, and you really have put in a lot, and I appreciate you." That way, the wife will feel very good, and the wife can say to the husband, "You did try, and I noticed that when you talk, the little children listen to you, and so I appreciate you." Say in a positive way, "I appreciate that you." You talk more to the children, and they really listen to you. But most wives will say it like this: When you talk, they will listen to you. But you don't appear. You you don't show up. You just go away. You don't talk to them. That's blaming. But if the wife says, you know, when you talk, they listen to you, and you know, you are the figure of authority. When you spend more time with them, they will listen, and then. You know, and I, I really would be happy to see that. That way is more positive. So first is resolving the the feelings. Now, for some couples, it's very hard. So some situation there has to be a counselor who can settle, help them to settle down, calm down, and to appreciate each person. And、uh, but for the couple, they have to find a way to to help. Each other to calm down,、uh, to feel loved, and then I'm sorry I haven't done my part, and uh, uh, I I want to do something, and so let us pray for the children and find a way. So so the the way is to apologize and then say yes I want to I'm willing to try, and let's think of some ways, and then. Resolving conflict, the best way is to explore. Remember, I use this term, the, the the word of law. The law is to explore, find out what can we do, how can we help the children. In this age, it's hard to help children because many children are rebellious. But what can we do? 
And with the children too, if we just tell them to do, it doesn't work. There has to be a lot of care, a lot of acceptance, a lot of love and appreciation. You have done a lot and you have done well. You have done well in this area. And I believe you can become a great person because God has a plan in your life. You can become greater and greater and greater. And that way, we encourage the child and then the child has a better chance to change. So for the husband and the wife to communicate to, you know, we try to find a way and how can we work together. And one, when one works, the other one will say, you are doing well. So today, when after my wife preached, I said, wow, you have successfully preached your first sermon. You're doing well. And you can do better next time. And, but then I, will say, I won't say, then I will go away more. <laughs> That's what she doesn't like to hear. But, you know, and now you can do better and both better and go higher and higher. And, and I appreciate her, her effort. Her talents is being used. So all this appreciation and trying to find a way to improve. When I suggest her how to improve her message, I would first say, you know, this is so good, so good, so good. And for this part, maybe there is some way to improve. And then we'll, we'll think about how to improve, to explore. Instead of teaching, to explore how to find a better way. So the key to conflict resolution, first is to calm down, apologize, say, I'm sorry for what I've done and I'm willing to do better and appreciate. Appreciate what you've done and then explore. Uh, I'm sorry for what I've done so far and I appreciate what you've done. So what can we do to do better? And if it's something we have done wrong, we say, I'm sorry I've done wrong. And how can I improve? Can you help me to improve? What are some, some of your, your suggestions? And then the wife, if the wife can talk gently, will say, instead of saying, you know better, you know how to improve, you just don't do it. <laughs> when a wife talks like that, when the husband listen. <laughs> so, you'll say, wow, it's so good. Every time when the other person talks positively, positively, the, the other person will talk positively. It's so good. You want to work on it. Then we can improve. Then we can find a better way. Let's think together how to find a better way. If each person knows how to respond like that, then the marriage will become better and better. Now, let me ask you, in your marriage, do you talk like that mostly? People don't talk like that. Because in this society, there's no education to talk like that. To talk positively, to say, you have done so well, and you know, I thank God for you, I appreciate you, you, you are doing well, and, and we can go better, and what can I do better? Let's explore, let's find out. So, so I encourage you to go this direction. So now if we apply to counseling, now, do you want me to talk a little bit about <coughs> Or do you want to go now? Do you want to stop now? Is it? I know it's past time already. <laughs>